I want to use my full frame camera, but I really actually I don't want to use my full frame camera outdoors is an absolute break to carry my M6 Mark II, which I absolutely love. I think it's an amazing camera setup. I want it to be good. I really want it to be good, but it is not when you compare it with this and it's pissing me off. <laughs> Have I heard the saying that the best camera is the camera that you carry on you? Well, if you're into vlogging while you walk and talk, that might just be true. This is a Canon 90D, a very popular 4K camera released only a couple of years ago. This is my full frame camera with a rather decent and heavy lens. Actually, this is a two kilo setup. When you think about it, it's mad. I'm filming on an M6 Mark II with a rather small lens. This is an iPhone 13 Pro Max, very light. But I've been doing some tests and I've discovered something that is quite surprising. I am now vlogging with a Canon 90D with an 18 to 55 millimeter EFS lens, okay? Now, the problem with this setup is, as you can see, if I go all the way out, you see that because the sensor crops in, you can see the vignetting. So I need to sort of get there, okay? So I'm on standard uh, digital image stabilization. So obviously the lens is even more cropped in, which basically gets you this uh, frame. And if I was to go on enhanced mode, I would literally have the camera, the lens right under my nose. You'd be able to see if I have any hairs in my nose. <laughs> that close it gets, you know. This is now the 90D with no image stabilization on the camera, totally disabled, relying on the stabilization on the lens, if anything, because this is a fairly cheap lens. I'm on around 22 mil focal length with the crop factor. I imagine it would go up to 32 or 35, which is not what you would call a vlogging setup. But you know, it looks really nice. You probably get a really nice shallow depth of fill. The autofocus is working really well. I can see my eye tracking. Now the question is, what is like the stabilization? I am now using the Canon 90D with the image stabilization turned on, digital, and with the EF uh, 16 to 35 f2.8. Can you see any difference compared to the previous shot where I had no stabilization whatsoever? And obviously this lens doesn't have any stabilization, so, you know, this is as good as you ever gonna get. Now the 90D is a really good camera, okay? It's an APS-C camera, it's a cropped in sensor, and, you know, if you're gonna be doing walk and talks, I don't think this is a great setup, okay, because if you put a really good lens like an EF uh, 16 to 35, like this one, I've got it on a Viltrox uh, speed adapter here when I use it with my M6, but if I was to put this on here, it becomes really front heavy, not ideal for vlogging. It's a great camera for being on tripod, just like pretty much any camera these days. I mean, they are just so freaking good. But I don't feel they are the right setup for walk and talk because these stabilizations that both the lenses and the cameras have is designed for photography, not so much for video. Okay, I'm vlogging using a Canon M6 Mark II, shooting a 4K 25 on an 18 to 150 lens. And this is not an ideal vlogging lens. That's why I'm using a sort of a gorilla pod type of tripod. But you'll get the idea of what I'm trying to illustrate here. When you do this type of thing, which is vlogging, walking and talking, you want a camera setup that is very well balanced. So you don't have this jerky or jitter motion uh, in your frame. I am now walking straight with a Canon EF 2.8, 16 to 35mm wide angle lens on a Viltrox speed booster on my M6 Mark II. So, I've got it stopped down to f2.2 because I get an extra stop of light with the speed booster. 
how does it feel? Uh, is this a good vlogging setup? This is my M6 Mark II, okay? And I absolutely love this camera. It's really small, really compact. It's so small, you can literally fit it in your pocket. It's really, really small. The 18 to 150 is probably not what I would call a vlogging uh, lens, especially because you need to take into consideration the cropping factor of the APS-C. But, you know, this is an incredible camera. But the question is, is it any better than the 13 Pro Max? I am now uh, vlogging with an iPhone 13 Pro Max on its wide lens using a third-party app called Filmic Pro. Okay, and I'm using a Sunmark Variable ND because it's not a very sunny day, it's cast shadows today, but you still need a Variable ND if you want to keep the shutter at 50, which is double your frame rate. And how does this feel? Um, what about the stabilization? Is this good enough? I should be getting a little bit of uh, blur background, organic, believe it or not. And okay, this is probably not the widest field of view. I'll attach a wide angle lens in a second so you can see the difference. But how does this compare to having a Canon camera? I am now using an iPhone 13 Pro Max on the main wide using a Sunmark wide angle lens and a Sunmark variable ND. And all of this comes together using a third-party app called Filmic Pro, and I'm using a C-Log color space. So this is as good as you're ever gonna get on a smartphone without the cinematic mode, and it should give me really nice colors, really good resolution, and as an overall, a really nice image. Now the question is, is this good enough when you compare it to what the iPhone can do without any filters, all on auto, or using the default camera. And also, how does this compare in terms of stabilization and the overall look when you compare it to what the Canon or Sony cameras can offer? And this is, again, on a fairly wide angle lens. If I try to achieve this with a APS-C camera or even a full frame camera, you're looking at very heavy front lenses, which means that the stabilization is gonna be all over the place. But anyway, how does it feel? What do you think? I am now on cinematic mode on the iPhone 13 Pro Max using a variable ND to keep the shutter at 50. So this is now 1080p, it's not 4K, and the phone is doing everything on auto, okay? I have no control over the white balance, over the exposure, over anything, okay? Now today is a fairly casted day and the light is pretty uniform, so you shouldn't be able to see too many changes. But if you're in a very sunny day, if you go from a bright area to a shade or a shadow, let's say under a tree or a tunnel, you see big changes going on. But as a whole, how does this feel? If I keep the F to 10 or 11, the depth of field will be there, but it won't be too aggressive. And I think it works really nice. And, but you know, this is not me who has to decide. What do you think? What is the stabilization like? Is it easy to watch? Do you feel the background is too jerky? So I am now using the iPhone 13 Pro Max on cinematic mode with the Sunmark wide angle lens and the Sunmark variable ND, okay? And what does this look like? Uh, is this now the absolute perfect talking uh, camera for vlogging uh, when outdoors? The depth of field should be fairly shallow even though I am on a wide angle lens. Now this is a 1080p signal and there is a lot of uh, glass that the light has to go through. I'm not sure how the iPhone can handle that compared to nothing on the front of the lens. Now, I'm not trying to suggest here that a smartphone or an iPhone 13 Pro Max is a better camera setup than a 90D or a full frame camera or an M6 Mark II or a Canon R7 or 10 or R5, R6 or, or whatever camera you can think of, Sony, Fuji, whatever name, you know, they're just so many. And the cameras these days are so, so good. Uh, these cameras, when you're static on a tripod or on a gimbal, they're really difficult to be. They are so, so good. But when you walk and talk, it's a very unique setup, okay? You want to have something that is fairly wide so that you get a good field of view. But at the same time, you want it to be stable so that, you know, your background is not jittery and, you know, gives you headaches, okay? And this is where the challenge lies purely for walk and talk, okay? I don't think there is anything better than the camera that you carry on you, just as I said at the beginning of the video. And the quality that you get out of a smartphone, it's amazing these days. And if you then add the lens and some filters, or ND filters, or very well ND filter, 
you can then keep the shutter at the, in the 180 degree rule and, and have similar settings as a DSLR camera, which again makes even nicer images. These you carry in your pocket. You can literally put a lens. If you have this or even a sun marquee, which is a smaller, you can carry this in your pocket, quickly put a lens and then the filter, mount it here and that's it. You are literally vlogging. For me, the idea of vlogging uh, walk and talk camera would be this camera body with the computational photography of the iPhone 13 Pro Max, with the sensor that I get from the Canon 90D or the M6 Mark II, and the functionality and features that I get from a full frame camera. Okay, that would be the absolutely ideal setup. But that's just not gonna happen. Maybe I'm missing something, maybe uh, Sony CV1 does a better job, but I've seen footage that looks really cropped in, even on a wide-angle lens. If you need to set up a camera like this, you need to get, uh, you know, the fact is you can't carry this in your pocket, it's just, just too big, you need to have a camera bag, you need to put a lens, then you need to put a filter, then you need to mount it, then you need to think about the cropping factor, and it's, you need to keep the arm stretched out like that, and it's just insane, you know. For what I'm doing here, I've got my M6 Mark II on a little tripod. It's perfect, you know, it's great. And I can control the camera from my smartphone, it's fantastic. But for walk and talk, what do you guys do? What do you guys have? What is your solution? I would really like to hear anyone's opinion on this because I've been doing tests for a number of weeks now and different cameras, different setups, and I keep arriving to the same conclusion. My 13 Pro Max is giving me better images or more pleasant images to the eye than I get from any of these fancy cameras with fancy um, interchangeable lenses. So in terms of practicality, is there anything better? I can't see this, but maybe I'm missing something out. Maybe there is a camera manufacturer that watches this video and they can enlighten me on something that I'm not aware of. What, what do you guys think about this? I would love to hear your thoughts. I'm sure there will be some hardcore users that will be slugging this video out and what I have to say. On the M6 Mark II, I have an 18 to 150, which is the one that I've been using for this video. I'm gonna be buying an 11 uh, It's an image stabilized lens, but I've seen some footage which I'll show you now, is not really that much better than what I already got. So it makes me think that this, <laughs> believe it or not, and I don't want it to be good. I really don't want this to be good. I want my 16 to 35 that I spent $1,500 a few years ago to be the absolutely dog's bollocks, okay? The best thing ever. I want to be able to vlog with this because it's so freaking lightweight. Well, relatively lightweight. I want to use my full frame camera, but I really, actually, I don't want to use my full frame camera outdoors. It's an absolute break to carry. My M6 Mark II, which I absolutely love. I think it's an amazing camera setup. I want it to be good. I really want it to be good. But it is not when you compare it with this. And it's pissing me off <laughs> because I don't know what else I can do or what else I can find so that I don't need to use my phone while walking and talking. But unfortunately, so far, that's the conclusion I've arrived. And if you're interested on what you can do with this phone, okay, the iPhone 13 Pro Max, both on its 4K resolution and with the cinematic mode, I've got a video appearing just here where I go through everything that you need to know to shoot amazing content with this phone. And with that being said, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you in the next video.